In this Tobacco University video, we're going to be investigating fire debris sample collecting. So if you were to enter an area that a fire had recently occurred, how would you go about collecting samples? Well, first off, we want to be looking at, well, what areas would we want to sample? And we want to look at, the, at areas that are likely to contain tra traces of ignitable liquid, because this can help provide some valuable information about what may have started or continued that fire from going. Areas you want to look for are like low regions and burn areas, depressions, uh, insulated areas within a pattern, poor substances in contact with the pattern. And examples of this could be like articles of clothing, paper products, or potentially uh, wood uh, in that debris sample. Also looking at seams or cracks, it could be in floors or next to walls. Uh, also important areas to be investigating for potentially good samples. Lightly burned edges of the pattern are good because they're not too far charred and they're not untouched. They kind of give you that fringe area and can tell you a lot about the fire there. Now the fire debris, the evidence you might be looking for uh, collecting. Uh, Paper and trash itself, if you're looking at the, you know, the trash can there, typically does not really yield much evidence. Uh, we want to be looking for if there was a use of an accelerant to aid in a rapid start. Was a chemical uh, device used? For example, we see the picture above me here, the flares. Uh, were they the potential start of the fire? Are there any signs that an electronic device that could purposely de delay the initiation of a fire used, indicating that someone may have been able to set the stage and then leave and then have the fire occur when they were safely out of the area? Also, unburned portions of chemical and electronic devices may be left behind. This can help, again, provide some more um, evidence leading to telling the story of what happened with this uh, fire. When we're collecting fire debris, so this is important that along with the sample from point of origin, a control sample should also be collected. This is material from a different room or location. It acts as that good source of comparison. There's carpet fibers, for example, there's synthetics, maybe petroleum based. So again, we should take some charred remains and also them from another room, especially if they're unburned to act as that comparison. Now, with transporting our fire debris, well, we want to transfer the collected samples into a tightly sealed container. Typically, it's a glass jar or a metal can. Kind of want to have that isolated, want to make sure we're labeling it, ideally putting some evidence tape um, over that so we're not having anyone tamper with it, and also indicating with an image and a number where we collected that sample from, because it could be very important later in the investigation process. Now the role of accelerants. So keep in mind that these aid in the ign uh, initial ignition and potential spread pattern of a fire. Usually in debris, um, make finding it a challenge because they tend to be dirty or contaminated. A lot of times, for example, with gasoline, evaporates very quickly, but we could potentially look for if there's evidence of a pore pattern, for example. Um, but these accelerants can really um, help determine that initial ignition point or potentially influence the pattern that that fire progresses. Now this uh, accelerant sample processing, so when we're looking at you know, hopefully identifying if an accelerant was used, if we do determine that to be the case, we want to send that to a lab in a clean vapor tight container. Typically paint cans are used, but not plastic containers. Uh, we could also use a uh, glass jar as well. We want them to be vapor tight because we don't want that accelerant to basically evaporate in its time from being recovered from the scene to entering the lab. One of three techniques are typically used, heated headspace gas chromatography, absorption strip, and solvent wash could help determine what accelerant was collected. Now keep in mind and remember uh, that during a fire uh, or explosion investigation, uh, you don't want to forget about collecting other forensics evidence such as uh, shoe prints in the area, DNA, tool marks, blood, fingerprints, and a whole host of others. So just because there's clear evidence of a fire being present, uh, by all means collect the evidence related to the potential fire, but also don't forget or don't cross-contaminate any other uh, typical evidence that would be collected at any forensics crime scene.